Hello and welcome back to the We Are City channel for Season 4 of the Manchester City career mode. Luis Enrique is the manager and Season 4 is here. And we've got an absolutely ridiculous squad at the moment. And of course, Kasper Schmeichel has joined until the end of the season on a one-year loan. On a one-year deal, sorry. Um, Short-term deal, he's retiring at the end of the season, like I said. But he is going to be joining us for our second-choice goalkeeper this season as Gavin Bazunu has left on loan and wasn't quite impressive, was he, last season. Just look at the quality we have in all positions, though. Uh, Luke Mbete is now going to be part of the squad, the number 24. He's been showing great potential, and he's in there for Nathan Ake. Uh, Jan Kuto is looking quite good as well, 75 rated. Diego Rosso, a lot of players that have been loan-listed, players that are still out on loan as well. Tommy Doyle. Uh, Howard, Bellis, those sorts of players I have transfer listed them. It doesn't look like they're ever going to make it the club. He's 22 years of age now, 74 rated. I think Howard Bellis is also 22, 21 years of age. He is 72 rated, so they're not going to be making it into the team, unfortunately. Uh, James McAtee, maybe next season. Cole Palmer's another one. 22 years of age, 72 rated. He's not going to make it at this club. Stefanovic is back from loan. 84 rated. We're going to have to try and get him in somewhere this season. Let's see how we work that out. Um, Quadro Bar will be sold. Morgan Rogers probably loaned out, actually. He's gone to 79 rated, so he's still got a bit of time. Phil Foden will wear the number 10 shirt this season. Samiento will be loaned out. Kaiki will wear the number 11 shirt. And, of course, we're going to try and get more game time for Liam Delap. Does that mean that we sell Lukaku now? Why his value is high? He's 31. He's only downwards from here. Maybe. But the issue is, we're selling Lukaku. Is Joao Felix is out until January. So... It's a bit of an issue, isn't it? But let's go through what I want to do with the squad by looking at the transfer hub. So, goalkeepers there for next season just in case. We've also got a couple of young goalkeepers. First transfer that we need to do is, of course, Kyle Walker's transfer. Kyle Walker has left the club. His contract did end at the club at the end of the season. We decided it would be time for him to go. And this man will be his replacement. Tariq Lamptey. He says we can bring him for around 44.2 million. He's 23 years of age. He's 84 rated. He will play back up to Joao Cancelo and eventually take over from Joao Cancelo. So let's go in for Tariq Lamptey straight away making a bit of transfer business. So we could offer a player swap in here Is the because uh, there's a few players that we do want to sell. Howard Bellis could be an option. Um, Kuliwef Aguilar could also be an option. Any midfielders. I mean, I suppose Tommy Doyle could be in including this deal, around 4 million for Doyle. Wingers-wise, maybe Quadro Bar would be a player they'd be very interested in. 11 million for Quadro Bar, plus maybe another 30 million. Maybe that's a good move, Bar to Brighton. They're not interested in Bar at all, but they want 40 million. I mean, I expected Walker's replacement to come in at around that. What about 40 million dead up? They're saying they want 44.2. What about 42 million? Him just below his value, which would be interesting. We can. So Graham Potter agrees to a 40 million, 42 million pound transfer of Tariq Lamptey just below his value, which is very good to see. And I don't think his wage is that high either. 73,000. Of course, he will ask for maybe a bit of money to Tariq Lamptey. But that's fine by me. He wants an increase. He wants an important squad role. That's fine. He will be playing second choice to Joao Cancelo. He wants, I'm going to give him a five-year deal. He's 23 years of age. A five-year deal. He's happy with Tariq Lamptey. Ex-Chelsea man, of course. No release clause for Lamptey either. That's below 80,000. He wants 1 million for appearances. We'll get rid of that. I'm happy to pay him 80,000. 780,000 signing bonus. 82,000. That's a deal that we're willing to do. So Kyle Walker's replacement straight away has arrived at Manchester City. And it is, of course, Brighton's English fullback, Tariq Lamptey. And Tariq Lamptey will wear the number two shirt at Manchester City, which I think suits him a lot. And he's already a right wing back and... Go to his development plan. How should we develop this man? I think maybe his defensive wing back. Improve his defensive side of his game. And then improve maybe his more attacking side of his game. Like his shooting. Because that is quite low as well. We've replaced the one player we need to replace. Everything else is okay at the moment. It depends on how things go with transfers in and out. And we've got the preseason tournament. To get some players fitness up. A lot of them are out on international duty. So this is the squad we're going to go with in preseason. Schmeichel starts in goal. We've got Kuto, Howard, Bellis, and Bete. And Aguilar at the back. Rossa, Makati, and Bissouma in the middle. Then Samiens on the right, Stefanovic on the left, and the lap through the middle. And we'll quick sim all these games because I'm never quite interested in the preseason tournament. And we come away with a 4 1 defeat. Makati gets a goal, but it's Cherky, Oliveira, Genduzi, and Hudson Odoi that beat us in the game against Leon. The second game of the preseason is against Al Hail. Same team again, simulated once again. And this time we come with a 1 0, and it's Liam Delap in the 24th minute. 
It's match day three of the preseason tournament, and it says there no sign of Lamptey, and I forgot that Tariq Lamptey is of course around. So let's get Tariq Lamptey in there. If he's not on preseason duty, isn't Lamptey will be in at right back now. Kuto in at left back, and we'll see how Lamptey does on his debut against Al Halil. 3-1 win, Delap and Bete and Bissouma with the goals, and they also missed a penalty in the 42nd minute. Well, due to the international tournaments, we expect the transfer window to be slow at the start, but look at this for a transfer offer. Romelu Lukaku, 101 million from Brighton. Well, that is a ridiculous deal, isn't it? Um, do we want to sell him to a rival? I mean, I wouldn't say Brighton or a rival. Would Lukaku want to move to Brighton? Brighton seem in a very ambitious side, don't they? Now, they didn't stoop too low for us. Is there any more Brighton players that we'd like in this deal? I mean, Robert Tone looks a good player, doesn't he? But to be honest with you, I don't think there's any Brighton player I'd like to take. Plan Makis. Now, that's an interesting one, actually, because he's been ridiculous for them in the Premier League. Imagine Makis and Lukaku up top. Maybe Brighton want to be a, a title-challenging team. Now, there is Ben White. There is Ben White. But we have John Stones, don't we? We have Luke and Bette. We have Diaz and, Luka and um, Laporte. Ben White would be the only player I feel I'd be interested in. Now, we paid 120-odd million, didn't we, for Lukaku when we bought him? Let's see if we can make that money back. 103 million. That's still a lot of money for Lukaku. He's 31. Wow, 115 million. 103. Well, Brighton, if you want to play with the big boys, you've got to pay the big money. This man's won the Ballon d'Or. Well, they're not paying 150 million for him, so Lukaku's not going there. I am open to selling Lukaku, I think, because we've got to give it the lap game time. The only issue is, I've been thinking about it, the striker situation. So let's go through the striker situation very quickly, because that's something we need to think about. Liam de Lapp deserves to play, and he needs to play, because he's not going to develop. So we've got to play de Lapp this season. So I want him to play second choice to Joao Felix. Now, of course, the issue is, Joao Felix, on the other hand, wherever he is, he's out until January so that's six months without a 92 rate striker and we can't put all the pressure in the lap and he's like pretty much debut season playing first team football as a striker now of course we have players who can play at striker we have I suppose Ferran Torres I mean Morgan Rogers could be one we think about to play there possibly but I'm thinking that's why we shouldn't sell Lukaku and we sell him in January if we're going to sell him. However, we could bring in just a, a striker for six months' time. You know, to play on a six-month loan or something. We'll see how it goes. Let's see what happens with Lukaku anyway. Because unless someone makes a big money offer for him, um, we won't be selling him to Brighton anyway. Or a rival in the Premier League. So it's Dortmund next. And we will make some changes to the team. As the team is a little bit tired. Phil Foden is going to come in. Rodgers and Bernardo Silva. Should we give Laktosh a bit of a game as well? Why not come in for Luke and Bette on that left-hand side? I think we will get knocked out here against Borussia Dortmund anyway. No, a 2-0 no win. Stefanovic and Foden with the goals. Really good performance from a side that is definitely one of our weakest sides. A well, transfer offer for Taylor Howard Bellis here from some French side. 2.8 million. We're going to have to let him go. He's just never going to be good enough for the side, unfortunately. And for the final game, the final of the preseason tournament, it is against Lyon, who beat us 4-1 on the opening game. Let's see how the side do. In this one. The 2-0 defeat. Regani gets sent off in the 83rd minute. But it's Toko Akambe who gets the opening goal. And then I think a regen. And we lose 2-0 in the final. But it's just fitness for the players. that the sort of fringe players really. A lot of them. So Taylor Howard Bellis has been sold. He leaves the club. An offer for Culliver Faguar here. It is 1.3 million. We'll see goodbye to the Peruvian. Not really ever going to be good enough is he again. Like Taylor Howard Bellis. 21 now. Only 69 rated. And it's Manchester United who have come in for Lukaku now. Well, no, I will not be selling him to Manchester United. He will not be returning there. I'm happy to let him leave. I'm happy to let him leave if that's what he wants. Because it seems that his agent is drumming up interest in him with all these clubs coming in for him. But um, I'm not letting him go to a team that we know well. Well, I think I'm going to make another move in the transfer market. And it is for this man, Declan Rice. 25 years of age, England international was absolutely incredible against us last season. When Leicester beat us, he was at the heart of everything. He cut everything out. He made every pass. Now, Rodri went through a really shocking bit of form earlier on in the season, and it, last year, and he picked it up really well then towards the end. But I need someone to compete with him. Herrera took over from Rodri, but I just think with Herrera, he's very one-dimensional. He's a ball winner, 
but it's going forward where his issues lie. Rice is a good combination of the both. And I'll see if they want Herrera in the deal for Declan Rice. And that might be a really good way to do it. I feel like Herrera would suit them as well. He's worth 59 million, which is only one less than Declan Rice. And they are interested in plus 43 million now. That is very high from Leicester City. I understand English tax and everything, you know. If he plays English, they cost a lot more. Well, they've dropped down a lot now. They've dropped down a lot. That's half of what they asked for in the first place. All right, 18.5 plus Herrera. I mean, that's a really good deal for us, isn't it? 18.5 million. So we're basically paying whew, nearly 70-odd million for Declan Rice, but Herrera brings it down. In the end, you, you sign Declan Rice for 18 million, a man who's probably worth 90-odd million. That is a wonderful deal, really. So Declan Rice to Manchester City. He wants a rotation really, except that he's going to be behind Rodri, which is good to see. A four-year deal. Let's get you in a five-year deal, Declan. You're going to be one of the best midfielders at the club. In that holding midfield role, no release clause. He wants 140,000 per week and a big signing bonus. Let's just change this. Give him 145. He's not in Declan Rice. Declan Rice is our second signing of the summer. Our third signing, of course, with Cashbush Michael. Welcome, Declan Rice. Clover Aguilar has been sold. He has joined Argentinos Juniors for 1.3 million, sorry. Changed that a million times, didn't I? And we got 1 million in the budget from his sale. Well, Crystal Palace are interested in taking Morgan Rogers on loan, and what a better place to go on loan in the Premier League for Morgan Rogers. We will negotiate this because I feel like it should be a one year loan rather than a two year loan. I'm happy at that. Roy Hodgson, of course, is still the manager. So a one year loan. For Morgan Rogers to Crystal Palace. Maybe he comes back next season. I hope so anyway. He actually looks a really good player. 79 rated at 21. I feel like he could make it at the club. Sevilla are interested in Jan Cuto on loan. And what a perfect loan that is for the Brazilian. He will go to La Liga playing first team football. Hopefully in a strong side. In a strong league. And that would be really good for him's development. So confirmation here. Jan Cuto to Sevilla. And Morgan Rogers to Crystal Palace. Both on loan. So our first game of the new season will be the Charity Shield game and it will be against Tottenham Hotspur. So this is a side we're going to go with against Spurs and with a few players' futures still uncertain and of course trying to get fitness up and sharpness up, some players aren't sharp at all. So we are going to play some of the players that played in the pre-season tournament and give some debuts to some new players. So Kasper Michael, our new second choice goalkeeper starts in goal. He will be our cup keeper throughout the season. We've got new signing Tariq Lamptey at right back, Diaz, and then Luke Mbete on the left-hand side of defence, making his Manchester City debut alongside Lamptey and Schmeichel. Teo Hernandez is at left wing back, although I'm thinking, you know what? Bakayo Saka is going to go in there today. We've got Declan Rice making his debut as well. Out are and Kevin De Bruyne in the middle. And it's Stefanovic. Remember last season we give Kaiki a go in this competition. Uh, they start the season to see if he's good enough, whether he needs to be out on loan or whether he was going to start. And he was really good. So we're going to give Stefanovic a chance. And then we've got to try and somehow fit him into the squad if he's that good. I mean, he's only 21, the Serbian. And he, he looks a really good winger. Fold on the right-hand side. And then it's Liam Delap through the middle. And the only striker at the moment, if... Lukaku was to leave would be Liam Delap, although we have sort of Ferran Torres who can play there. I suppose Foden could play there, the Bruyne could play as a false nine. Um, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, it depends if some of these players leave or stay. I'm not quite sure yet, but this is the squad we're going to go with against Spurs. Well, here we are at Wembley once again. I think we called it the London Etihad, didn't we? Last season, we're here so many times, and we're here once again at the start of the season for the FA Community Shield. And we face Tottenham Hotspur, a side that looks very similar to as it used as Tottenham Hotspur. They've not really made big changes over the seasons, have they? So Manchester City versus Spurs. Spurs side looking very similar to usual. A few signs in there, of course. Live from Wembley. Stefanovic has gone and Saka's going to find him. And here is Stefanovic. Oh, he's got inside Carvajal. Into phone as well. Not a bad pass. Cleared away. Great run by Son. He's away from Lamptey. Son across the box. Saka deals with it really well. Got a quite an English core in this side as well, which I'm liking. Into our Into the lap. Oh, what a touch. The lap! Oh, he's put his shot wide. 
Should be scoring there, Liam Delap. Great first touch here. Finish lets him down, however. There's going to be our first choice striker, our second choice striker behind, you know, Joao Felix. When we've had Lukaku banging in the goals, he needs to be a lot better than that. Foden, what a ball. Stefanovic, onto his right foot, the Serbian. It's a great save by Mateja Perrin. Into Stefanovic again. Stefanovic one more time, blocked. The lap knocks it back into the box to Stefanovic and he gets a goal on his debut. Does the Serbian. He's playing for his place in this Manchester City squad this season under Luis Enrique. And he's doing well here. Cross comes in. First time, Stefanovic has a shot. The lap knocks it back in. Well done, Liam De Lap. Assist for him and a goal for Stefanovic. A header as well. Only five foot nine, the Serbian. But he scored a wonderful goal here. In the right place, the right time, in the box. And he gets himself a goal. Manchester City. One. Tottenham Hotspur nil in the Community Shield. We lead. Perrin. Time and space. Luke and Bete doing the work. Lamptey. Sits it up. To Awa. Good defending again by Spurs. Richards this time at the back. Well, forward and well played and Bete. Good ball to Stefanovic. Stefanovic, good block. Spurs always solid defensive when they play against us. Saka tried to cut that counter out. that couldn't do so. Here it comes, Harry Kane. Diaz takes down Diaz. Takes down Harry Kane. We'll get a yellow card for this one, Diaz. But he stopped the counter attack. Here comes the yellow card for Ruben Diaz. Deserving yellow card. He did go for the ball, to be fair. But he did take Kane out. Still might have a chance here, though. Richards. Dispossessed by De Bruyne. Stefanovic. They won't let us counter. By this half-time one, though, we lead Spurs in this Charity Shield game. And we've been far the better side, I feel. Spurs have hardly been falling. It's that man on his debut. Stefanovic. Maybe he deserves first-team football this season as a backup, like Kaiki, to grow and then become first choice. Into our art. By Stefanovic. Oh, down the box, Stefanovic. He's won a penalty as well now. The Serbian. Against Takito. Slides in on Stefanovic. Just pulls the ball back. And goes down as the Serbian. Penalty time. And do we alert? Still Thorin take the penalties from now on. If he scores this one, maybe. He's got the number 10 shirt on now. Got to be scoring goals, hasn't it? Foden steps up. Oh, it's off the bar. And it's away. A little bit too high from Phil Foden. Cross comes in. It's a free header. Oh, it's off the bar. Rice in there. And Schmeichel picks up his first save of the game. The worrying thing was that was a free header. Stefanovic. Good run by the lap. Into the channel. Here comes the lap. Oh, Liam Delap down the box. Is that another penalty? Richards gets the yellow card. Is it in the box or is it on the edge of the box here? I think he's in the box. It is in the box. Do we give phone another go? Do we say, go on, Phil, have another one? Put it in the same place. Foden! Oh, he's missed the second one. He's definitely not being our penalty taker. And Phil... Good block as well there, and we play out of it. Really well played there by us. Bissouma drives forward. Looking for a movement from the lap. Oh, great movement. The lap! Oh, great finish from Liam the lap. That's why he should be playing more this season. Maybe we've got to give him a chance. His movement's great there. He made two or three runs. The third run was where he got found Liam the lap, and he was there to finish the chance. Michael celebrates 2-0 Manchester City. We will be lifting the Community Shield once again. The Charity Shield. Really good win as well. I feel like we've been dominant. Not got anywhere near us, have they? At all. Stones for Mbete. It's going to be another substitution. The lap here is so strong. Holds off Richards. A good finish on his weaker left foot. Good performance from the lap. He's won a penalty as well. Every time he plays, he scores the lap. That's the thing. 
every time he started, I think, in the whole of this career mode, he scored in every game he started. And he just says, we've got to start him, haven't we? Or we've got to use him this season. I, it's not worth risking stunting his development for a 31-year-old striker who is on the downward spiral in Lukaku. Oh, what a ball here by Son. Offside. We've got to play him. We've got to play him this season. Last season, I shouldn't have done what I did to him, really, and, and not played him at all. But we've just got too many options at the club. Oh, he's made a nasty tackle here, the lap. We'll get a yellow card for this one, will it? I'm told not to do it again. The ref's been very lenient today. Stefanovic. Oh, great ball. The lap. What a save by Perrin. What a save by Perrin, and that is full time. Manchester City 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. We beat them with ease. So we will be lifting that trophy once again, the Community Shield. Stefanovic, welcome to Manchester City. He's been out on loan for quite a while now, the youngster. Uh, he was on loan at um, Belgrade, past and Belgrade, where he came from. I'm trying to think where we've loaned him out to. RB Salzburg was another place he's been on loan to. And clearly, all the experience has worked him well. He's 84 or 80 now, the 21-year-old. And he deserves a chance in this Manchester City first team, doesn't he? So Kevin De Bruyne steps up to lift the Charity Shield once again. Manchester City Community Shield winners. Well, AC Milan have come in for Diego Rossa on a one-year loan, which is a really good move for him. 21 years old, maybe we can get him in the first team next season. He will go out on loan there. Well, the side that I think Alfonso Henriquez was on loan at last season have come in for him on 3.3 million. We'll accept that deal. One that will make it the club maybe in the future. One that you have to bring back, really, because at the moment he's not the high enough quality for this squad. So Diego Rossa has joined AC Milan on a one-year loan. So before we start the season, these two things we need to cover. First is the objectives the clubs have set us and the objectives we're going to set ourselves. And then finally, we need to look at the sliders. So our objectives overview this season set by the club board is within the same season, sign three crucial players to make a profit of 112.5 million. It says we've not even signed a crucial player with Lamptey and Rice, which is a bit of an odd one. Win the Champions League and win the FA Cup. So youth development wise, sign at least two players younger than 20 years old with potential greater than the average overall rating of the player in the current same position. Sign one player in youth academy assigned to the defender position. And then within two seasons, sign one youth player to the senior team, played in five matches either as part of the starting 11 or coming on as a sub. We've got two seasons to do that. Brand exposure, get 12 wins in um, home league matches. That was from last season, we got 15. Expand the club's South America in uh, well, in South America within two seasons as well. That's another objective financially. Sign three crucial players, that's the one with 112.5 million profit. They want us to win the Premier League, win the FA Cup, and of course, win the Champions League as well under Luis Enrique this season. But we've got our own objectives. Like last season, we failed in quite a few of them, didn't we? But we've got our own objectives once again to try and make it a little bit more difficult of things we want to achieve. So these are the personal objectives we've set ourselves for Season 4. So game-wise, you want to keep 17 clean sheets from 38 Premier League games. We managed to get 16 last year and the aim was 19, which we didn't reach. I think it was 16 or 17. So I think that is possible this season. We want to score 20-plus goals in all competitions with Liam Delap and make 20-plus assists in all competitions with Phil Foden. I think the assist is going to be harder than the goals, but we're going to give it a go. Squad-wise, we want to end the season with less than eight winners from Guardiola's first title-winning season. So that's like Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, um, Laporte was there as well, wasn't he, in their first title-winning seasons, and John Stones, Edison. We want to finish the season with less than eight of those in the squad. We'll see if that's possible. Sort of a regeneration of the squad. That's what we try to force ourselves into. Uh, build a team with 10 or more homegrown players, English players, which should be possible. We've brought in Lamptey and Rice, which has increased the homegrown quota. Financially, we want to make over 120 million plus from player sales over the summer and January transfer window. Again, that should be possible if we complete uh, the task of the squad by the end of the season with less than eight winners. And finally, sign any key player to a long-term contract three years or more. So we need to get Phil Foden, the lap, players like that, Felix on like a four or five year deal. So they're at the club for a very long time. And they are the objectives for this season. Hopefully we complete them all. Well, now we've looked at the objectives and you know how we're going to be aiming for things this season. We also need to change the sliders. Once again, maybe we didn't be as successful last season, but it was too easy possibly so we are going to make it a little bit more difficult once again the sliders so the cpu are going to be a lot quicker 54 sprint speed 53 acceleration shot error is going to go down to 27 or should we go even lower 26 pass error is going to go down to 18 shot speed and pass speed i don't think that's anything we need to worry about 
the injuries again. Goalkeeper ability up to 70. So the goalkeeper's going to be even better now. 63 mark. He needs in tight to us. 55 run frequency and line height. Don't think we'll change that. Line length. Don't need to change that either. Fullback position. First touch control error. Down to 20. So they're even better now. They're quicker. 25. Why not? Pass error 15. They're even quicker. They're better at passing. Surely this is going to be our most challenging season yet. So we kick off the season against Brentford at home. And let's see what side we're going to go with in the opening game of the season. So this is the side we're going to go with against Brentford today. Edison starts in goal. We've got Lamptey, Diaz, Laporte and Hernandez in the back four. Rice, Awa and De Bruyne in the middle. And it's Ferran Torres on the right. Raheem still on the left. And Liam Dolap through the middle making his Premier League debut. I think his first Premier League start. Um, especially in this season. He's going to be using a lot of him. Kaiki Foden, Basuma, Rodri, Cancelo, Stones and Schmeichel all on the bench. I'm actually thinking maybe of putting Stefanovic on the bench ahead of Bissouma today. But um, maybe we rest Foden, he's a bit tired. Of course, no Lukaku in there, no Gundogan, no Bernardo Silva. I'm not sure about their futures. They're the three that I think maybe make way for some younger players this season. Lukaku especially for Liam Delap. So here are the Etihad for the opening day of the new Premier League season. And we face Brentford today. And with the sliders improved, this might be the most difficult game we've ever played. We'll see how well Brentford play. See there, Sam Johnstone is their goalkeeper now. Next West Brom man. There is Kevin De Bruyne, the captain. Ready to lead his side to possibly another Premier League title. So Manchester City versus Brentford. And it's live from the Etihad Stadium. Fires went into Sterling. Really heavy touch, De Lapp. Oh, he's done well here. Sterling into De Lapp. Liam De Lapp. Ooh, nearly a goal there. It's a penalty anyway. Off the hand of the Brentford defender. We'll see it again. It's Friedel. It's harsh. De Lapp with a strike. It does hit the hand of Friedel. His arm is not by his side. De Bruyne steps up. I don't know if I want De Bruyne or hand penalties. We need to decide who's going to be our penalty taker, don't we, really? De Lapp, I think, scored a few for us. Let's see if he scores one here. De Lapp! Oh, he's put it with power past Johnstone. He's not even hit it that well, Liam De Lapp. But he gets the first Premier League goal of the season. Past Sam Johnstone here. Good finish by Liam De Lapp. Hits it with power. No chance for Johnstone. And our first goal of the season is scored by Liam De Lapp. He's come through the youth team. What a way to start the season. Route 1 to De Lapp we go. Into De Bruyne. Hernandez. Look at Awar's run. We found him, Awar. De Bruyne. Over the top to De Lapp. Down the box. Referee. Should be a second penalty. He's not give it, but that was definitely a penalty. Not the biggest, but he'll battle. Chance here, though. Good tackle by Diaz in the box. Solid as ever. Ferran. De Bruyne. Oh, want to go back to Ferran. Sterling, De Lapp. Oh, brilliant from De Lapp. First time ball to Awa. It's just a little bit too wide. I feel. Awa. Hernandez. To Ferran Torres with a good header. Deflected away though. Ferran, well played. Sterling. Across to Ferran Torres. Defended it well. Again by Brentford. Lots of half chances really. We've not really had shots. More created chances. It's Laporte with a header. Saved by John Stone. Awa, foul on Hussein Awa. Clear foul on Hussein Awa here. Tackle by Laporte. Still got the ball forward with Brentford, but that was a clear foul on Awa on the turn. Canos here. Gets a cross in. Diaz away. And Lamptey away as well for Ant. De Bruyne, and that is half time. One they will lead Brentford, had plenty of chances. It's a Liam Delap penalty. It keeps us in the lead. And he's been fantastic today up to that. Three chances so far, but not a clear chance, really. Lamptey, well played, Tariq Lamptey. And look at the pace of this young fullback. Burning away from the full the defenders and their fullbacks. Cuts it back to De Bruyne. Great block again by Brentford. Really good block. Oh, great ball. Great ball. What a save by Edison. What a really good save from Edison that is. At the near post. Really good. What a save. Really good save. 
Cancelo comes on with Kaiki. Try and see this game out. Edison out. Good punch. Just give De Bruyne a bit more space. Wide to Kaiki. He will run the Brazilian. And Kaiki lifts it up to De Lap. Oh, well, how about that for a Premier League debut? How about this? A penalty and an overhead kick. See you later, Romelu Lukaku. A younger and better man has stepped up. What a goal by the lap. Kaiki just lofts it to him. And the lap finishes this game. Look at this for a goal. Bang. We've known for so long, haven't we, that if you play the lap, he will score. And we've said it so many times. And we've played the lap. And he has scored. And he scored an overhead kick. That is the quality this man has. 21 years of age, 76 rated. He would be so much higher if he played him last year as well. His second goal in the Premier League. Harry Kane, he's coming for you in that England squad. What a player. What a player. Hernandez swings a leg out. Laporte makes a good tackle. It still falls to the player from Brentford. They got lucky to win that. Oh, Edison, what are you doing? Penalty. Why does Edison throw it out so lightly? I've tried to launch that to the fullback, and he's just just gone, oh, I'll just dip it over here. Declan Rice give away a penalty. I don't know how. Because it might have hit his hand. Well, if you can see it here, how unfair is that? Then Bermo steps up. 2-1. No clean sheet. Undeserved. That's Edison. That's on Edison. Silly throw, it, throw out again, which he seems to do a lot. Cancelo, another foul by Joao Cancelo. He's on the yellow card as well. All the, the ref, the game has been played. The referee's still playing on. Chance here into the hands of Edison. That is full time. A 2-1 win over Brentford at home. We made it difficult for ourselves at the end after a bit of silly mistake from Edison that cost Declan Rice after a really good game from Rice. But Liam Delap, the double from the penalty spot and then the overhead kick. What a quality striker he is. Manchester City 2. Brentford 1. So Spanish side Ibar have come in for Tommy Doyle. 4.7 million. Hopefully that's a move where he can develop really well and maybe come back in the future. Because I do like Tommy Doyle. But he's just not Manchester City quality at the moment, unfortunately. Alfonso Henriquez has been sold. 3.3 million. And Tommy Doyle has decided to join Ibar. So he will move there for 4.7 million. Good luck in the rest of your career, Tommy Doyle. The last of Villa have come in to take James McAtee on a one-year loan. Maybe they've lost Jack Grealish and want a replacement. I think he could go out on loan to Aston Villa play in the Premier League next season, really impress and come back as his first choice player next season. So I'll accept that for James McAtee. Well, James McAtee has agreed to join Aston Villa, so he will go on loan there for this season. And he's a bit a loan offer to the Bundesliga for Philippe Stefanovic. Now, he's been good. And he obviously is Manchester City quality. The only problem is we have Foden and Ferran and Sterling and Kaiki. You can all play in the wings. And maybe we wait until next season to give Stefanovic his, his loan move. I think if we change to a one-year loan now, this season he has a loan and next season he plays Manchester City first team football. I think this season is just a bit too early for him because we can't fit him in despite being 84 rated. Raheem Sterling's better and that's the only issue. The players are better than him. Otherwise he would play, I think. So we'll get him a one-year loan to Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga. And next season, he really will be playing Manchester City first-team football, I'm sure of it. So that is going to end today's opening episode of Season 4. I hope you've liked it. We will kick off the next episode against possible title rivals Chelsea. Thanks very much for watching. Please do like the videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. That's massive for us. We'll see you next time.